Welcome to episode 51 of From the Shed End podcast with myself, T. As always, Theo, how are you doing? Good, thanks. It's been a while. Um, missing the footy, but also enjoying the fact that you can relax without having Chelsea ruin your weekend, which they've been doing a fair bit of in December, January. So can't complain. Yeah, it's, it, it's, it's, not been a, it's not been a best December, definitely. Um, obviously, we spoke about it previously around not being in contention for the Premier League, but a lot's happened. It feels like we haven't recorded in... It feels like forever, but it's probably only a week or so. But um, there's a lot to talk about in this episode, I think, anyway. Um, let's get straight into it. Why not? Let's talk about the transfer activity that didn't happen, which I'm glad about. I'm sure if we we speak to a lot of Chelsea fans, the sensible ones, they'll agree that it's, you know, it's um, did we, we didn't need to sign anyone. And I think this is something that we always said. But give me your thoughts. What, what was your thoughts? Obviously, we were linked with quite a few players. Usman Dembele was one of them. Luka Dina before he moved to um, Aston Villa. I think there was slight talks around um, Traore from Wolves, who's now at Barcelona. But what's your thoughts? Did, did we need to sign anyone? Is it, was it a panic buy if we did? Not at all. Uh, I think like you, you, said, you said it perfectly, if you're a sensible Chelsea fan, you would have realised that our squad is very, very capable of completing the season with the current batch of players that it's already got. Obviously, there was those fullback, you know, positions that maybe needed a bit of strengthening, but the only kind of bit of business that would have made sense, in my opinion, to, you know, strengthen that left wing back position would have been bringing Emerson back from his, um, his uh, loan at Lyon. And um, there was complications in the contract that we, the loan contract that he's um, he signed in last summer, which meant that, you know, he wouldn't, he wasn't able to come back to Chelsea. Um had that happened, I would have been quite happy. I would have thought that would have been quite a good cover. You know, you're getting a player that belongs to us back, which makes sense, which we've done in, with Kennedy, which seemed to be that, you know, plan B of the, of the you know, the Emerson deal not working. Um, but no, I didn't want us to rush into the transfer market, buy anyone, make those stupid, you know, rash decisions of players that would need a month or two to settle into the league, the team, to learn the language. Usman Dembele, for me, when, you know, those rumours surfaced again on transfer deadline day, I literally had to put my phone away because I didn't want to hear anything about it. You know, when you've got a player that, you know, can't even make this play football at Barcelona, who, let's face it, are, have been rubbish lately, how do you expect mm. him to get into this Chelsea team? And you've got players like Ziyech, players like Pulisic who are fighting for that, spot, um, you know, that spot as a winger. For me, I'm quite glad we didn't approach that. I'm just quite scared that we might try to make another move for him in the summer. But um, we can worry about that in six months' time. But no, I'm actually really glad that we didn't sign anyone. We didn't panic. And also, I'm really glad that Rhys James may be back in a couple of weeks' time as well. Well, I was just about to say, I think that is definitely um, a massive factor in terms of why we potentially didn't get go in for the market. Obviously, we, we looked at um, Milan Saar. He can play sort of centre-back and left centre-back if needs be. Obviously, we've got youngster hall as well lewis hall that's there as well so there's a lot of options for tuchel still and obviously like you just said as well you know reese james hopefully back in contention um for the club world cup we we talk a lot about as chelsea fans we talk a lot about deadwood plays we need to move on baba Rahman's ross barkley um you know not just to name those but you know those those plays are on big wages you know six-figure wages They're, they're at the club they sign four or five year deals you know, we would have just added to that list of players that we, we talk about when we talk about Deadwood and players that need to go. These are the players that we're talking about. And to, to add a Luca Dina who potentially would, you know, he, he's not he's not a player that I would say is going to be a first team regular if he was to sign for Chelsea because obviously you got Chilwell. He's still got Alonso. There's there's players ahead of him, I think, that would start. So he's going to be loaned out in the summer. So I Obviously, for me, Ian Matson would have been my perfect choice or Emerson if we could have gotten them both one of the two back from from their respective clubs they're on loan at. But Tuchel apparently didn't even want uh, you know signings this this, this uh, January. So the, the board were well within their right to to back Tuchel. They've done that ever since he's been in the club, and we just have to to trust that he's the one that understands what we need in the summer and. I look at the, the players that we need to move on. I think over the next two summer windows, I don't think we can do it all in one, but I think over the next two summer windows, we can definitely get rid and cut down um, the players that we've got there. I, I put out a tweet yesterday. I think we're, you know, this does include um, Sal Niguez, but still to the point, you know, we're spending just under a million pounds a week on players that wouldn't even get a sniff at the first 11 at the moment. They're not first team regulars. They're, they're bench players. 
the players that are in and out of the team. And it's just, for me, those are the players that we need to move on. Yes, they're good players, they're quality players for the likes of, you know, a Villa or an Everton, but at Chelsea, it just seems we, we, we're harbouring these sort of players that will sit in a four-year deal, earn six figures a week, and they're, they're just part of the, the team. Yeah, no, I completely have to agree. I think the main kind of bit of business we should maybe try to be, do is January and then focus on this summer. And like you said, it's maybe a two-year, you know, plan is get rid of all that, those players that, you know, are just living living off those wages still, you know, the likes of Drinkwater, Baba Rama, and maybe eventually Kennedy, if he still can't get into the first team. I did see that list of, you know, players with um, you know, almost a million pounds worth of wages, you know, accumulated together. Some of those players are a bit harsh, I felt. You know, you've got players like Aspi, like Christensen, yeah, like yeah, Alonso. Yeah, of course, yeah. Who, you know, yeah, I, yeah. I don't really like calling those players dead wood. You know, lots of cheap was on that list because they're still great yeah. servants to the club. And, but they're more players that look like they're heading towards the exit door because, you know, for whatever reason, you know, they can't agree a new contract or they want to leave or um, they're not getting the game time. But yeah, I think there's a big list of players that, um, you know, maybe showing the door this summer or, you know, may, there may be a better player that can replace them. You know, younger, maybe fresher player. You know, you look like Alonso. I, I really rate Alonso. I've always rated him. I think he's often been a scapegoat for Chelsea, you know, amongst the fan base. But can he be upgraded? Probably yes. You know, um, even Emerson's coming back next summer. He's had a fantastic learner, Lyon, who haven't been performing particularly well, but he's been a bit of a, from what I've been reading, quite a, you know, a promising, you know, player for them. Um, he could come back to Chelsea and challenge Alonso and you don't want to be having three left wing backs. I know we could have benefited from that this season with the injuries, but next season, hopefully, if we stay clear of injuries, you know, you want, you know, you want to chill well and maybe, a you know, a better player, but um, Matson's another one who could come back and prove a point. So um, there is strengthening to do, and there is a lot of players like Drinkwater who we just need to we need to get rid of. If we can make a profit, I mean, if we can make a bit of money on them, then let it be. But it looks like no one will want to match his wages or you know be willing to to spend money on him. Uh, he's on loan at Reading at the moment with Baba Rahman. I highly doubt Reading. You know, come June, July, they'll say, yeah, we're going to take both these players off your books. No, they're not. So that should be a focus um, in the summer before we um, we actually think of getting a Declan Rice, a True Many. Um, there's someone else I think we're linked to um, Kunde Fafana whoever it may be yeah and it's it's true you know I think we look at we look at the players that we've got there um, you just mentioned some of them and you know they, they are good players I mean I'm not going to sit here and bash them and say that you know I call them dead wood because they are that for Chelsea but if they was to go to you know a Brighton or a, an Everton like I just said before one of those sort of table mid-table teams or teams that are pushing for Europa League or you know even and this is no disrespect to them but Arsenal you know a team like that who can who aren't always competing trying to push for Champions League or, or you know league trophies things like that a club like that could you know they'll flourish they'll do really well but I just think in terms of what we're asking of them at Chelsea. It's just, for me, it doesn't make sense. But um, that, that's a massive thing that you, you mentioned as well in terms of wages, because you, you look at the likes of uh, Drinkwater, who's on, you know, relatively nice wages. I, you know, I personally think we're going to have to take a massive, it's either they run down the contracts, we have them at the club, they leave on a free whenever the contracts are up, or we have to do what I think Barcelona and Arsenal have agreed to do, which is a very strange thing, which I, I read about this morning, was Barcelona have the player and Arsenal until the summer are helping to pay the Aubameyang's wages still, which is, un, for me, is unheard of. You know, once your player's gone, it, you know, the, the whole reason you want them gone is because they're off the books. But um, we could potentially see ourselves in that situation because who is going to want drink water? Who can afford drink water is probably the better question. You know, who can afford him? The wages he's going to want, unless he takes a pay cut, you know, it's not looking likely that we're going to move them on. Yeah, no, 100%. I think just Barcelona, um, being Barcelona and the historical kind of importance and symbolic value of the club, you know, it attracts those players. You look at Adama Traore, he's, I know he started his career there, but I think he's on £15,000 a week, whereas Tottenham offered him 110000 or, you know, a bit over 100 k So um, they've done quite well, Barcelona, in terms of saving money, this, this transfer window and, you know, recruiting, you know, people criticising them for getting a Bama Yang, um Traore and um, Ferran Torres but I think that's quite smart business um, so credit to them but yeah focus should be um, to try to if we can just cut our losses on players like Drinkwater Baba Rahman and it's harsh but maybe even release them from their contracts this summer if you really don't want to you know if you've got a club that's willing to take them but not you know pay a fee for them it it's could be an option. option 
it's a good option because it saves, I mean, in the long run, obviously there's going to be compensation involved, but in the long run, they're off the books that it's no longer Chelsea's problem. But I wanted to ask you before we move on, who do you think or who do you feel has had um, over that January period, had a, what clubs had the best window? Because for me, I look at Liverpool, I thought bringing in Diaz was a very good signing for them. But I also look at Aston Villa who brought in Philip Coutinho as well. Um, Luca Dina obviously going there as well. Two good signings. Matt Target going out on loan as well. So who, who would you say has probably had relatively... And Newcastle, obviously, but who, who would you say has had the best window this January? I mean, if I'm completely honest, none of the top six, this transfer activity completely wowed me. I, Liverpool signed a very good player in um, in Diaz from Porto um, for quite a good fee as well. Um, but I do expect, you know, it's quite hard for a January transfer uh, player that comes in January to really you know, start off like, um, you know, at the club, get used to the club. Um, but for me, I um, think the clubs you just mentioned, Aston Villa and Newcastle have recruited fantastically. I think Gerard's got that poor power, you know, to attract those players, the likes of Coutinho, the likes of Dean, the likes of, I think they've got Olsen, the goalkeeper, um, miss, I'm missing a few others. Um, but Newcastle, I think their transfer business, if I'm completely honest, is smart as well. They didn't go for these big names like Eden Hazard, like, um, you know, maybe a, uh, uh, Luka Jovic players like that they recruited smart players from the Premier League the likes of Dan Berg Burn, the likes of Matt Target that, are, that know the league that I think will will actually save them from relegation if I'm honest so that, that's probably the most important for them they wanted to sign players that maybe aren't part of the long term vision but will save them from relegation and then they can really rebuild the squad around those top top talents you know this summer but um, I've been quite impressed by the players that Newcastle brought in particularly that um that chat from Lyon, the Brazilian guy. Um, don't know much too much about him. I don't watch him a lot of Ligue 1, but my housemate, who's um, who's French, told me he's a very exciting player and he was linked to a lot of the bigger teams, you know, in France. And um, a bit like Emerson, he was the one player at Lyon who's actually been performing this season. So, um, yeah, I, I'm actually quite excited to watch him play. It's going to be interesting. You, you spoke about Gerard, so we, it's only right we talk about Super Frank, Frank Lampard. Um, I don't think we spoke since, I mean, we spoke offline, but um, obviously Frank Lampard appointed Everton uh, head coach or coach manager, whichever one you want to call it. He's, he's brought a, a very strong um, support network in terms of coaching staff with him. Obviously, Duncan Ferguson still managed to somehow keep his job, surprisingly. But um, good appointment, bad appointment. What, what's your thoughts? I think it's a good appointment. You look at Everton, they're, they're still a big club, you know, in English football, a very big club. I think we kind of think of the Everton now that have been, you know, a bit trigger happy of managers the last couple of seasons, inconsistent as well. But I think they needed a bit of a new identity. They needed um, that manager maybe that, that's managed in a championship, that's managed at a top level, that's got that Champions League experience and that's also quite you know, up, fresh with his tactics. You look at Benitez, it was very outdated, I felt. Similar to how Mourinho, when he came out at Spurs and United, it was outdated. But um, I'm excited. And I think, you know, we spoke about him maybe being, when he was linked to that Norwich job, whether it was suited to him, I think back in October, November. And I'm glad now looking back that he rejected that because he's at a better club now, a better group of players. And I spoke about Gerard's poor power. You know, Lampard's attracted to, you know, I think out of favour, but still very talented midfielders in Deli Alley and Donny van der Beek, who kind of said one of the main, you know, decisions for them joining Everton was Frank Lampard. You know, two midfielder players that, you know, in their early 20s that would have watched Frank Lampard growing up and to be managed by him was probably going to be very exciting for them. So I'm quite excited to watch um, Everton play, just how, like I said, about Newcastle. And um, But, um, you know, managing a team in blue, it can only, it can only go well, you'd think. Well, you say that. I mean, it's a it's a massive job. I think it's a it's a massive, massive job. And as much as you know, obviously, I want to see him do well there. I just think this next period of um, you no, know, we have to be realistic. You know, Everton could poten potentially be in a relegation battle. I don't think they will be, but that was the sort of slope that they were starting to to go down. So I think as long as he stays away from there, he sustains obviously. We start rebuilding the team, which it looks like he's already done that. You know, like you said, Deli Ali and uh, Donny Van Der Beek as well coming in. Two two big signings. We got we got to remember. You know, Dominic Calvert Loon was was injured for the best part of the you know the first half of the season. The, you know, they brought in Solomon. Well, say they Benitez brought in Solomon Rondon, who just for me just didn't fit. I mean, he's obviously uh, you know a favorite of Benitez. I think he's the third club he's been with Benitez now. So 
you, you look at Rondon, he doesn't really fit. But they've got a lot of players, again, just like Chelsea, you know, they've got a lot of players that are just there. You know, you look at Awobi, he's just there. He's not, he doesn't really do anything. He's not effective. Tom Davies, for me, you know, he's, he's not good enough to be at Everton. You look at the likes of Mason Holgate. Is Jordan Pickford good enough to be number one? Is he, you know, do they need to bring in a, a new goalkeeper and, and look at that defence? Because, you know, you look at Michael Keane and uh, is it Yerry Mina? they're good in spells but I think that he's got a lot of work to do and I think as long as he's given the time he's given the, the amount of time to, to be able to to um, to blend in his own ideas blend in his own thoughts bring in his own players like I said the coaching staff I think is vital you know obviously Ashley Cole you know, news came out today that he's left Chelsea his role at Chelsea um, to go and support Frank as well so he's got the team underneath him which is is brilliant but then I think you know you've got to you've got to give him time and if he doesn't get that time it's a bad job because or, or they get relegated. <laughs> if, you know, if they did, which I don't think they will, but if they did, then he's got a relegation on his CV now after off the back of a, a sacking at a, a top club. So I want to see him do well. You know, I think I think Deli Ali going there is a, a big thing. I think he needs to rejuvenate himself as a player. Um, same with Donny van der Beek. We haven't really seen him in the Premier League, so it's, I, I'm looking forward to it. Um, obviously, they've got the new stadium coming as well, um, which is being built. I think it's due in if not next season, the season after, but it's promising for Lampard. If he, if he does this, if he gets it right, he gets Everton back into European football, you know, a, a top job is going to be available for him at the end of this, 100%. Yeah, no, I completely agree. Um, I think Lampard's a great manager. He's young, he's quite fresh with his tactics, but he needs to be given that time. You know, you have to remember he came in in January, I think the day before deadline day, or if not deadline day, he bought in maybe two players that he wanted but um, I think we, he needs to be given past the six months. I think they won't get relegated Everton, but they'll be hovering around, you know, that 15th place spot maybe. Um, Calvin Lewin being injured, like you mentioned, has been a big factor to their poor form. Uh, I think some of the players just weren't really playing for Benitez, like we saw with Luca Dean, who wanted to move away because of that. Mm. But um, if, um, if he can kind of get this group to play football um, and maybe bring in some more players that he's wanting in, um, in the summer... Hopefully a couple of the Chelsea youngsters. I'd love to see like a, Har- a Harvey Vale or a Billy Gilmore um, on yeah. loan at, um, at an Everton. Then I'd be, um, you know, great bit of business. Um, but no, I really do want to see him, you know, be given more time in the Premier League, implement his ideas, his system and get the players he wants. And then um, I hate saying this because uh, Everton have also always been a team that have kind of frustrated us as Chelsea fans. But, you know, they may become, you know, the Chelsea fans' second team to watch, you know, in that bottom half of this, the Premier League table. But um but I say bottom half, but he should be getting them into Euro- uh, maybe um, European football, at least Conference mm. League um, spot. Yeah, and I think it's doable. You know, I think it's doable. I, I think the core of that team is there. I think, you know, you look at, I mean, I'm a big fan of Ben Godfrey. I think he's a really good defender. Um, he's versatile. He can play left. I think I've seen him play right back as well. He's centre back, you know, he can probably play midfield. So he's someone that I think is very versatile. I love him. Um, Andros Townsend, Damari Gray, I think they're, again, two good, brilliant players as well. But Richarlison as well, good player. And and obviously Dominic, Dominic Calvert-Lewin's another good player as well. So, and, and Pickford isn't, a, you know, a completely bad goalkeeper. I just think he's prone to mistakes, but that could also become, you know, come to um, the fact that he's got the, the likes of, like I said, you know, Yerry Mina, Michael Keane, those sort of players in front of him. So, it's going to be interesting. Um, I agree with you. You know, I think he's got he's got everything there, got the quality about him to get the team, the club back into, you know, if not Europa League, at least the Conference League football. And and yeah, I'm looking forward to that. And I kind of haven't invested, uh, you know, uh, sort of invest in Everton anyway. So, you know, I'm going to keep doing that. I still watch them. The, the training ground's literally down the road from me. So let's hope I bump into Frank and uh, give him a few pointers on what to do with the squad. But... Let's move on. Let's talk about, before we wrap up, let's talk about Club World Cup, um, which is coming up very soon. It feels like we've been talking about the Club World Cup for for months and months and months and finally it's here. So um, it's going to be big. It's going to be, you know, I think looking back, I read this morning, it, there was meant to be um, a change in how the Club World Cup was actually, form, you know, the format of it was was due to change. It was meant to include like the Europa League winners. Um, it was meant to be like, I think it was 20, 21. So, so more teams than we've got anyway. And um, they didn't do it because of COVID. So this is the old format, but from here on in, after this one, it's going to be the new format. So just talk to me. Obviously, we've got memories of Corinthians, I think, in the final. 
I think sure it was 2012, the Corinthians won 1 0. Um, Benitez was manager, wasn't he? I think at the time. Um, just give me your thoughts. Obviously, you know, we've been in this tournament before, we've never won it. It's it's the elusive trophy that I think all Chelsea fans want to see, the, the, the sort of crest on the badge that you can get afterwards. What, what's your thoughts on the Club World Cup? No, it's a trophy that we don't have in our cabinet and we want to win it. You know, we, Tuchel is the manager that plays in every tournament to win it. Um, and Chelsea fans want to have that missing trophy, you know, that we we came so close to winning in twenty in 2012. Like you said, we lost to Corinthians 1-0. I think we beat Monterey um, in the round just before 3-1. I remember I was still in high school and with the time difference, I was watching it in class on my phone in my pencil case. Uh, yeah, I just, I just remember that. I don't know why, but... Um, but uh, but yeah, I think expectations for us are to win it. Um, I'm expecting us to play Palmeiras, the Brazilian champions in the final. But players would have had a long break. I think a lot of our main players may not even play or feature on Saturday against Plymouth. You know, resting them for the Club World Cup, which means a reason more to just go all out and win it. Being played in Abu Dhabi, temperatures might be a bit, a bit of an influence. You know, we haven't really trained in warm weather recently at all. It may favour some of those more South American teams, maybe some of the, you know, the Al Hilal's um, Middle Eastern teams. Um, but no, you know, in quality of the squads, I'm not going to say I've been watching any of the those teams play. I don't really know anything about their domestic form. But we have that squad. We have that depth. We have the manager this time. We like the Super Cup. We lost it three times before. And then fourth time this last summer, we, we won against them, um, Villarreal. So I expect the same with the Club World Cup. And like I said, expectations are to win the first game, get to the final, and then win in the final. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of the things you just mentioned are you know, very true. You know, you, you look back at how Thomas Tuchel plays and the fact that we didn't win the Super Cup and then we did eventually. So there's a there's a lot that I can take from this, a lot of positives. And I agree with you. I think, you know, the, the key thing for me would be to rest as many players. I, I don't think he will. I think he's going to put out a relatively strong uh, team on Saturday. But, we fly we fly over to Abu Dhabi straight away after the game, so it gives us a couple of days before our first game um, to to just maybe adapt to the climate, adapt to the you know surroundings, etc., and, and just um, yeah, just get a feel for the expectations and get a couple of those training sessions in before the first game. I think it's on Wednesday, so um, which is strange. It's on E4. I read I think on the Chelsea website that the the games have been shown on E4, which is the most bizarre channel to ever show football because. No one watches E4. Um, but yeah, in, in terms of the football, I, I think, you know, it's the elusive trophy. It's the one that we all want. And look, we, you know, I said last week or early this week, you know, we're still in contention for the Club World Cup, the League Cup at the end of this month, the FA Cup, if we can beat Plymouth, which we should. And we're still going to get top four. So I, you, know, you look look back on that from a club perspective, you know, sure, I mean, it's not the best, you know, obviously we, we wanted the, the Premier League this season, but it's not that bad of a season. When you, you know, if you can go, go get to the end of the season and you've got three trophies to show for it and a top four, it's not that bad of a season. No, I completely agree. I listened to your previous um, short episode on YouTube and um, objectives now for this rest of the season, the next four or five months should be top four and minimum two more, you know, two more trophies between the FA Cup, the League Cup and the Club World Cup. So, um, you know, if we can start with two trophies this month, then we can just focus on top four, or maybe the FA Cup. But um, but no, it's going to be a busy month of um, football in February. But when I say busy, we've only got one Premier League fixture in Palace away. The rest are cup competitions, Club World Cups, League Cup finals. So um, so yeah, a lot of look, f- football to look forward to, but also quite scary to think that some you know of our closer opponents might sneak up on us in the league table. Yeah, well, it's interesting you say that because I think today they've mentioned. Um, the COVID sort of postponement games that were bef- before, um, I think it was before Christmas, wasn't it? So all those games mm. now are going to be played on the 23rd and 24th of February. Good. One of them, which I think is Liverpool, who play Leeds, I think four days before the cup final. So I'm, sh- I'm, I'm sure there's going to be some sort of reason they can't play that game. But I'm sure we've got a game. <laughs> I think we've got a game anyway, probably five days before, before the final. I'm sure... I'm going to say Palace. I think the Palace game is only five days before the cup final. So six. I think six. we play Palace on the 16th, 16th. And we, we've got, I think maybe an FA Cup fixture or. Oh, maybe, maybe I've, I've, maybe I need to look back at it, but I'm pretty sure we've got a game on the 22nd or something. I'm sure we have, but um, yeah, just in terms of, you know, 
playing those fixtures, I agree with you. You know, it's obviously you want to win trophies, but you want to also keep one eye on the league as well because you look at the likes of Tottenham who, we have to be honest, have strengthened slightly in terms of what they've got now um, from the window. But also Man United as well. You've got to look at United. They're still there and thereabouts. So it's going to be, it's, it was always going to be difficult anyway. I don't think it changes our, um, you know, our perspective on trying to get top four. I think it's just get into the game, get you three points and get out of the game. So, you know, it, it is what it is. You know, we are where we are. But just in terms of the Club World Cup, I think, you know, again, like you, I don't know much about the other teams. Um, I, I don't follow them, so I can't really give you a full analysis of what I think of them. But I, I, for, for them to be there, they're obviously good, you know, and I think we just have to respect every club, take it on, you know, I'm sure Tuchel will have done his research on them, but... You know, I, I listen to some people's podcasts or I go on YouTube and I listen to people and it's almost a guarantee that we're going to win it. But we've got to respect the clubs that are there because, you know, like you said, if it was a Mon- Monterey that I think we we played them previously, um, and I'm pretty sure they're quite a regular in the Club um, club World Cup. So, you know, you've got to respect these clubs. We don't know about them. We've just got to be, we've just got to be ready for whatever's come our way. And hopefully, hopefully this is a time for Reese James to to be put back into the squad because that's I think one of the the plans for two calls to, to take him um, to Abu Dhabi with the squad, get him a bit of game time, and hopefully build him back up for the the final leg of the uh, the Premier League as well. Yeah, I, I actually just checked it's um, Lille at home nah. on the twenty second yeah. of um, I knew there was a game I couldn't of remember February it was. on the tu- yeah on a Tuesday, so we've got about four or five days. To is that away? To that's away. The, is that the away it's leg? Home, it's home first. Oh, home first. Home? Right. Okay. Yeah. But um, but like you said, all the teams competing in the Club World Cup are the champions of their respective yeah, yeah. regions, continents. So they're there for a reason. We have to respect them. But you, as Chelsea fans, we're also confident that Tuchel and the rest of his um, staff has done their homework on those teams and how they play. And um, opportunity as well to test out some new players' formations, but possibly, you know, play a Lewis Hall, play a Sounder Gares, those type of players. Um, even maybe Saturday against Plymouth, you know, whether we go for a mm. back four or, uh, you know, back three is another option. Um, but um, you'd really hope that our players now have gotten in that two-week rest that they deserve. So a lot of them were in Miami, Dubai. Dubai, um, yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah, traveling across the world. Um, yeah. But um, but they deserve that rest because they've been playing a, probably the most football in the whole of the division. So um, well, We didn't get a COVID so yeah, postponement, so... We didn't, know. No. So you'd think um, they're, a bit, they're a bit more energized now and I think fatigue isn't really a, an excuse anymore. Mm. Just just before we wrap up, I know I said that before, but just you've mentioned it now. So just give me your predictions on Plymouth. I don't really want to talk too much about it because we should we should beat Plymouth regardless of who we put out. So just give me your prediction as to where we're going to be three o'clock on Saturday. Well, what is the score going to be? Who's going to score? How many are we going to score? Is the is the question? Well, you, you, it's Chelsea against Plymouth. If we're not in the next round of the FA Cup, it's quite embarrassing. Um, just checking now, they're, they're seventh in um, yeah. in League One. I think they're doing. They okay. didn't get a win. Yeah, they didn't get a winter break, so they they played football um, last weekend. Mm. They beat um, Doncaster three one. Yeah. So you know they're doing quite well domestically. Um, for the, I actually studied at Exeter University, which is the local too. rival team yeah, to yeah. Plymouth. So at Exeter, they hated Plymouth. They absolutely despised them. So it's a bit like the Chelsea Tottenham rivalry with Plymouth and Exeter. So um so I'll be wanting to win it, obviously. Um and uh, I think we will win it by multiple goals. I'll I'll go with four 0 Four 0 Sounds good. I was gonna go three. I'm gonna go for three nil. Um clean sheet. Obviously Mendy, we haven't mentioned Mendy, but he's got obviously got the final um on Sunday for the African Cup of Nations as well. So um yeah, you know, I trust Kepa. And and whatever it's a back five, back four, I think we're going to do well there as well. I agree with you. I think it could, of, it could be Bettinelli. It could be Bettinelli again. Um, I think I saw that the yeah. cover picture, the uh, artwork they, have they used for the picture, it had Bettinelli on it, which is often an yeah. indication. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which is you know, it's fair enough. I suppose you want to, you don't want your sort of reserve. I don't know, call Kepa the reserve, but you know the the one underneath Mendy. You don't want him to get injured in a, a game like against Plymouth, and then you've got Bet- Bet- Bettinelli for. Club World Cup, so it makes sense, you know. And I think, you know, back four, back five, arguably, arguably, we should be able to keep Plymouth at bay, keep them away from from goal as well. Um, be interesting, and I, I hate bringing him up because I feel like I do it every time on a podcast. It'd be interesting if Lukaku starts, um, and the reason I say that is because if he does, I expect goals from him. I think he's had his rest; he's been out of the limelight. 
he's got no excuse. Like you just said, you know, the players have had a two week break now. So that whole fatigue and mind's not in the right place. It's, it would be, it'd be rubbish to say that now because he's, he's had a two week break. You know, the floor's yours. You know, you've got to do something with 100%. it now. But, um, you've, you've had players like Ziyech who have been criticised and who yeah, have really yeah, stepped yeah. up, you know, right before the winter break. I'd expect the same from Lukaku now. Yeah. Like all of them, you know, everyone in that team now, there's, you know, we can't use fatigue and tiredness as an excuse. So it's going to be interesting. I'm looking forward to the press conference, which I would assume is probably early morning, probably half 10, seeing as we're early kickoff on uh, Saturday. But, Whichever it is, I'm sure Tuchel will give us some sort of indication as to what he's going to be planning for us on Saturday. But um, yeah, I'm going to go 3-0. You're going to go 4-0. It's going to be interesting. I think you're at the game as well, aren't you? So, um, We're both, yeah. both at the game, if I'm not yeah, mistaken. Yeah, yeah. No, I just, yeah, I'm in, I'm in the West End, which I've never signed before. Um, so I'm looking forward you were to there, that. You were there with me for the Liverpool game, weren't you? Yeah, sorry, Upper. I've never sat up. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Never sat up. Never sat up before. So I'm looking forward to that. It'd be good to sit in the upper upper tier. Um, see what the view's like as well. I've never sat there. So it'd be interesting anyway. So yeah, I'm, I'm sure sure we're gonna have some fun there. Uh early start for me. I think I'll be sitting out at like quarter to five, a uh, quarter to six. Yeah, so lots of coffee before I get there. But it's gonna be interesting anyway. And obviously we've got the Club World Cup to look forward to after that as well. Um, but yeah, Theo, as always, before we wrap up, thank you for joining me. Um, and don't forget, guys, like, share, subscribe, comment, all of that stuff on YouTube. And make sure you follow us on Apple and Spotify as well, the podcast. Make sure you don't miss those. Um, but Theo, let's hope for some victories this month. We've got a busy month coming up. The main one for me is Liverpool. If you can beat Liverpool, I don't care about anything else, which you've got tickets to, I believe, as well. You've got some decent tickets, Cat- category three, I think, didn't you? Might be, yeah. Uh, <laughs> the hour Wembley is always good fun. It's yeah, always yeah. good fun. Yeah, definitely. But yeah, episode 51. Thank you all for listening. Until next time, make sure you stay safe and hopefully we get some victories to look forward to. Thanks for listening.